That is one angry baby there. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Well, we're back for day two of the Utica Antique Show, and as you can see, it's pretty drippy this morning. We're supposed to have rain a lot of the morning. Even though we technically open at 8, we're not expecting a big rush until the rain clears out, which is going to be closer to maybe 10 or 11. So, what I think I'll do is go around and show you the show. If you wonder why old yokes sell, well, this is why. People use them as plant hangers. Sometimes they turn them into hanging lamps. Neat, rustic, cabiny looking way, or farmhouse looking way, to use actual things from a farmhouse in decorating. In the 1980s particularly, it was popular to make pie covers, similar to cake covers, and pie covers were made to look like pies. The one on the right is Treasure Craft. This is a hot water bottle, but the shape of it is interesting because these were meant to be able to lie flat on the floor so that you could put your feet on them. You'd put hot water in it, and if you were riding in a carriage or an early car, where you would not have had a heater, well, this was your heat source, even riding on the train. It's $17. It's actually pretty inexpensive for what it is. And here is the other carriage-style foot warmer. This one's only $25, and you notice it's carpeted. This would be from about 1900. You'd put your coals or a peat block in there and light it so that it would burn, and that would be your warmth. They're more of a novelty. But if you're restoring an early horseless carriage, for example, then it's a must-have. Well, I put my chenille away because I don't have the best tent for this, but these folks have a nice dry spot. And look at this pretty chenille with the big bow and the floral bouquet coming out of it. Very nice pattern, and it's interesting because it's asymmetrical. Usually chenilles are exactly centered, so this one's a little more interesting. It's priced at 68 this is a great little spice set down here because it's complete, because it's got black lids, so it's a high contrast. These are from about 1940. It's got the whole set of eight spices in it. This one's priced at 195, which is probably top end for it. Look at this Pyrex bowl. This is a pattern I don't see too often. I like the color, and it's bright on a dark day like today. The show really reaches into the far corners of this field. The layout is kind of interesting. There's a curved road in the middle, so everything sort of spirals off of it. So it's a little hard to tell where you've been and where you haven't. I like this dinette set. It can probably survive the weather to a point. The curved shape in the top and that rounded base I mean that this is an earlier one probably late 40s also the shapes of the chairs you notice well this stuff's fairly weatherproof the little medical cabinet is nice 175 dollars but it does have that nice little backsplash so that could be convenient make a nice bar and this piece here is something that you would expect to see on top of the barn and it is a wind turbine Not sure what you'd do with it, but it's neat. I guess you could use it for its original purpose. A very stickered up race version of the classic 1960s pedal car. Big Crocs are just going for big money now. This 20 gallon is hard to lift, hard to move. You put it in one place and leave it there, but it's priced at 220. They are popular now. Also, any signs that have embossing that are older are doing well. The classic Red Wing number five. Great fiberglass lamp. Priced at 250, but you know, these have gotten so popular, it's not really surprising. Well, the Tonka truck has 63 Corvée Stingrays on it, so that gives us an idea of its age, and it's in really good shape. That is one angry baby there. And I, yeah, you never see the trailer. I, I haven't seen it in 20 years, I would say. And I think I've only seen one ever, actually, other than this. 
And it's got to be 60s because it's got the U-Haul guy with the winking eye. Yeah, that's really cool. And you've got all the tongue and everything, which I'm sure is usually missing. That's great. And this is really amazing. Is this Betty L or Moline? No, it's or Keystone. It's Keystone. Okay, I had their... 1927 Packard. 27 Packard, troop really. Troop. Yeah, I figured it was a troop carrier because it looks like it would have canvas stretch over it. And that's priced at eight ninety five, and uh, you know, and I have the Keystone fire truck. I think I got about fourteen hundred for it. These things really are great. Instead of the bee sting, you've got a slipware crock with a flower. The newsboys had to buy. Them. Oh, the newsboys had to buy these. Okay, and this is what they drag the paper around in. Mm -hmm. Detroit News. That is really cool. I've never seen one of these. Did he remember uh, when he was using it? Yeah, back in the fifties. In the fifties. Okay. Wow, that is really cool. I've seen a lot of wagons, but I've never seen one that was for the newsboy before. That's really interesting. Well, I think the free press has got one, too, but I think it's spoke wheels. Spoke wheels for the free press? That's really cool. Thank you. I'm glad you pointed that out, because it's a neat wagon, but I did not notice the Detroit news printed on it. That's a good story. Well, a couple of cocktail glasses. I always like the ones with the dancing folks on it. And then this one with the recipes from about 1970. Anything with recipes I like, it's a good price. And this unscrewed, so that's good news. So I'm gonna get that while I'm here. Oh, and he set up the blue lamp so we can really see what it looks like. The moon and stars. Yeah, the moon and stars in that color is really hard to find and that is in great shape. Very pretty piece. And 250 is retail on that. It will sell for that price. Even, good morning. Oh, hi there. Even on a gray, rainy day, there is nothing happier than seeing a bunch of pastel planters to remind you that better weather is just around the corner. These folks are viewers and very nice, and I just met them, and they've got really neat stuff. They said they sold a lot of furniture yesterday. This is a neat farm table. Uh, belly cabinet, some people call them, with the drawer underneath shaped like that. And it's only $275. I like the pierced tin work on the top. It's neat that it has this big backsplash and extra storage, and it's got the tin counter surface here. Now, I complained a couple videos ago about painting things again and having it not be the right shade. This is the right shade of red. This has been redone in a really nice way. This is going to be from about 1950. It's in really good shape and only $35, even with all that effort that's come into it. I have to say I'm tempted to buy that because it would be very useful for display at shows. And it's waterproof, and as you're seeing, sometimes that matters. And they've got a whole display of treasure craft. This is the fruit line. It came in the orange to butterscotch glazes. It also came in the blue-green glazes. And they did a lot of different things. The fruit line was very popular and went on for a while. This is 1960s. The hardest piece to find in all of this is the butter dish, but the ones that sell the best are the beer bugs. And wow, what a nice dresser. That is beautiful. I just really like that top. So it lifts up for the gloves and things to go in, it looks like. Oh, that is very nice. Nice burl, too. Do you refinish? No. This, is, this, came, this like it is. came just like it is. Wow. You know, it's it's hard to refinish veneer anyway because you just you can just grind right through it when you're sanding and then it's ruined and so I like the way you painted it out. They look like it, I know. I remember the first time I had one of these that I was fooled too because it's the right era and you just assume it must be Bakelite and then I tested it with Simichrome and nope, it wasn't. <laughs> And it even had that, you know, I rubbed it and it sort of smelled like it. But the smell test doesn't work. Oh, People swear by it, but it... I, I tried. I don't know how many times it doesn't work now. Mm-mm. Right? Mm -hmm. 409 and scrubbing bubbles, yeah. 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 Um, right, Chucky. Yes. Yes. So that's what I believe that this is. I think somebody added this. Oh, yes. I believe that's exactly what it is. 
Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, the Indians would make uh, flour in it, and uh, it's it's really neat. I, I love this piece. I think it's yeah, a great really piece, and two hundred dollars is a pretty fair price. I saw one at a show last year, and it was the first time I'd seen one in a really long time. And I think they had two fifty on it, and it did sell. In some ways, if it's an old repair, it's really interesting. But I think this was done deliberately along all of the legs. It looks like so it was probably just. You know, when they're rolling flour back and forth in it, I suppose that it's really easy to, you know, have it become wobbly, so they probably had to reinforce it there. It's clearly handmade. I, I think they're really neat, but I love that. I actually like the idea that somebody made an ottoman out of it. It's really cool. Yeah, that is just a really neat piece. Well, you have fun stuff. I used to do, a, I used to do podcasts, so I'm familiar with the whole... Oh, awesome. Okay. Stuff. And your vintage vittles on Facebook. Yep. Cool. Oh, that's great. Well, you've got really neat stuff. I like the topper gum machine. That's a piece that I haven't seen in a long time. It needs a lock and key. You sometimes can find those, though, and because of that, 75 would be a great price if you could find the other pieces because it's really an attractive one. It looks like about 1950 at the latest. Could even be a little older. He's got the Seabird Consulette. This is the mid-60s one where it looks like the miniature jukebox on the table and that way you could sit at your table in a restaurant and play your music without having to leave the table. And look, singles a dime and an entire album signed for a quarter. Little rubber face monkeys. These have a label on them that says that they are made in Korea. They're going to be late 70s in that case. Uh, Waddy Piper edited the Road in Storyland. These are $12 each. Great graphics. There are a lot of children's books like this from the middle 20th century with these really good, really colorful, very visible graphics. And I enjoy those. A lot of other people do too. It looks like they have several of these. Animal Friends Storybook is another fun one. Let's see if we can see some Animal Friends. Well, there's some right there, but they're the same ones we saw on the front. And then on the bottom, the real storybook. Kids books just always do well. This flange side is genuine old stock. It's got just a little rust around the edge, which I like because that helps us know that it's not brand new. And it is $150, which again, a good price for the condition. Flange sides are very popular now. And this is cool the way the spinner has been painted. I like that. He's got some really good stuff. He said he had a great day yesterday and I'm not surprised. He also has the best draft beer in town. I am starting to look at wood painted signs because they have a charm to them and it's getting so hard to find metal ones. The Partridge Family game. So he's definitely hitting a lot of mid-century collector stuff as well. Old street sign. This is a neat display here. $85. I think I sold mine for $95, so he's very fair on that price. It's from the early 40s. Foam. Use on oil and grease fires. 18 That's on Masonite. And then Stroh's fabric from the 1960s. So he's just got a fun bunch of stuff. He's got a really good eye for, to be graphic and interesting from that era. And then this is a Talio horn. This came up of a Pierce arrow. And he's got 35 on that, which to me seems very reasonable. If you had an old car you were restoring, that would be a must-have. And then I like this too, the Ford 300-500 Club, 1961. So this is a rolling tray. These rolling trays were very popular, these TV trays about that time. This one he's got $40 on, which in this area, again, you have to remember we're in Detroit. This is where this sort of thing should sell. And so that seems like a pretty reasonable price for what it is. So he's got cool, fun stuff. And he says there's more, but with the weather, we're keeping it down for right now. Well, here would be a project for someone. This is a leaded glass lamp with the leaded glass missing. I'm not sure how you'd replace the glass panels. It might be something that would be fun to do with some other material, and you could get the color. It'd be a way to have the look of a nice old 
lamp and it's got the great original frame from about 1910. Really pretty leaded glass piece here, the slag glass. It's got a combination of prairie style and almost an early deco aspect to it. Prairie style, of course, was the architecture favored by Frank Lloyd Wright, developed by him around 1900, for homes in particular. Just a really nice piece. Hey everyone, I just wanted to take a quick break and thank you for watching this video. If you're enjoying it, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Also, please do subscribe because then you can click that bell to be notified of future videos. We have membership packages. There's a couple of different levels. We appreciate the support of our super fans who help us do extra bonus content. You can check that out by hitting the join button below or clicking the link in the description. And lastly, we want to ask you to check out our new channel, The Antique Nomad Live, that's live with an exclamation point, where we're doing additional content of a live nature, haul sales, bonus stuff, We'll have a lot of fun there too. So check us out here on the Antique Nomad and also on the Antique Nomad Live. Now let's get back to this video. And this guy likes things that make sound. So you've got the Panasonic oh, portable radio, okay. a little desktop radio, the RCA Victor from the early 60s with that interesting shape. The radio that looks like a television, which looks like a 1970s Japanese idea. But he also has some big old phonographs. And I'm going to show you the desk model last because that one's probably the most interesting. But he's got this nice one. Notice how the top seems like a portable, but then it's on a music cabinet base. This is a nice thing because a lot of people don't have room for a big floor model. So you have the option of the small piece or even having the player in a different room than the records. But this one is really cool. Look at this horn that's going on here. This is an Edison cylinder player. You can see the blue cylinder disc on there. That was before records. And then the horn's going to hang from the top. It's got this nice morning glory shape. Sometimes they're painted out like big flowers, and those can be really valuable. But what's nice about this one is it has the attachment piece as well, which we'll see in a minute. Speaking of horns, look at the way this one's painted out with the flowers. Now, people love these. People will buy them just for decoration, but if you have an old player, having the big fancy horn like this is one of the things that makes them more attractive. They were more expensive new, and they're more expensive now as collectors. And then he's got the bird automaton, which is a music box, and that bird will play and tweet and sing, and those are worth a few hundred dollars easily, three to five hundred in the right hands. And there we go, there is that nice profile Oh cool, we're going to hear a tune here. Oh that's great, it works really well. That's cool. And you see the Orange, New Jersey with a 1905 patent date. So this is my great-grandfather's age. That's the year he was born. The S-shaped horn is not something I've really seen before. Marx's Fort Apache playset is one of the most popular things that they made in the 1960s. And you notice the plastic Indians and cowboys and soldiers. It's got lots of poke marks in it, so somebody apparently was fighting the battle from outside. But it's $85, and for the condition, that's still a perfectly fine price. Now people think of vehicles usually with models, but this is the Black Knight of Nuremberg, and they have two of them. This was by Aurora in the 1960s. There were model kits that were made that had to do with people famous and otherwise. The old pattern blankets, wool, and mohair, and all of these are definitely collectible now. 
This one has a nice pastel 50s color scheme and it is 65. And of course we have Afghans. Well, boy band collectibles may make a comeback. It's entirely possible that people who have nostalgia for that generation and all of that hair product will decide that they want to collect these things again. You have something very important to buy, which is ponchos. And my friend did not bring a waterproof coat, so I'm going to buy a poncho from you. What'll be fun about this booth is showing you all the different companies besides Ball that made mason jars. So for example, you have a safe seal with a glass lid. Jeanette, Jeanette's Mason Home Pack, is uh, Jeanette is a glass company that made a lot of interesting things in Pennsylvania. That is a Royal Full Measure Registered Quart. An Old Mason, you can see the bubbles and the different design there. Swayze's Improved Mason. Mason have the patent and lots of other companies got permission to produce them under the patent. You'll notice prices in the $8 to $12 range on these. I always like these because the Presto jar is a 1930s thing with that glass top that you could see through and it was easier to seal. But as we get down here we're going to see some more unusual ones and this is where people really start getting into collecting seriously is when they start getting unusual colors like the Atlas Easy seal in this greenish color. We'll move on down and see some others as well down here. A lot of coffee jars here. More jumbo peanut butter. I just sold the jumbo peanut butter yesterday. The very small one is very hard to find. That's why it's $80, whereas the one that's just slightly bigger is considerably less, because this is the scarce size. And look at all the different varieties of jumbo peanut butter. It's always got the elephant and that embossing, but lots of different shapes. This one with the bale is hard to find, so it's priced at $150. $40 on that one, and then you see that the uh, style of the lids can vary. So just in this one product, there's all these variations, and that's where people get interested in jar and bottle collecting, is variants and different things that make one thing scarcer and more valuable than the next. But now we're going to get to some of the really unusual mason jars. Millville Atmospheric Fruit Jar, that is a hard one to find. It has a different kind of bale. People sometimes look for the different ways that they were made in order to determine whether something is more unusual. The crown behind is a green color that's hard to find. Decker's Iowa, Mason City, Iowa, appropriate place to make mason jars. That one's 18, but next to it is the beaver, and that's hard to find. $85 on that. And then even within, like, ball jars, the eight with the four dots. This is a particular variant, so you look at the bottoms, and that can have an impact on the value of items as well. So just like every category, there is a lot of specialized information to know when you start getting into specifics. This globe is priced at 150 It's got an 1886 patent date and an unusual sealing bale that would have sealed this way and then you clip it in and that's what holds your lid. Here's your original shape with the 1858 patent date. A three pint is a different size, so that's going to be worth a little bit more. Again, an unusual green color here. The wide mouth telephone jar. Now that's one I haven't seen before, priced at 35. So Hansi, there's a lot of small companies because these were heavy to ship, so you needed to have them made fairly locally to supply the demand. And at one time, everybody needed these because you didn't have the grocery store down the street to go to when you needed this stuff. It's the middle of winter and you're stuck out on the farm somewhere. You need food, so you better have it there. The Woodbury has got an interesting bale as well with an 1884 patent date. So a lot of changes in this technology between Mason's 1858 patent and the jars that we see today. Now with the popularity of the toys of the 1950s and earlier, it's easy to forget that 
There have been a lot of changes since the 1970s and 80s when these trucks were made. Trucks are not snub-nosed anymore. Lots of companies that they advertise are no longer in business, so these are starting to be collectible as well, particularly some of the Nylint and Ertl pieces, and they're selling in $35 range typically. The Miller Beer Clock is a cute one, and if it works at $75, that's a fair retail price these days. And then the old Simplex school clock is priced at 28. That's a fairly typical price for those. This is Fenton's Ruby Crest. We show a lot of Fenton because Fenton was so popular and distributed so far, but you don't see some of the colors in the Crest line, which is where they took the milk glass. If it's just clear, it's Silver Crest. That's the common stuff. But when you get into the colored Crest, some of them can be hard to find and the Ruby was not made long. These figures are all Beswick, or Bezik, as a lot of the folks in England pronounce it. And it's a great example of why Beswick, or Bezik, is really prized by collectors of animal figures, because they took great pains, almost more than any other company I know, of trying to make things as realistic as possible. They would have their artists study animals in the wild, However, this one is marked Royal Duck, so the dealer made a mistake on this. Now, this seal could sell for as little as the $30 she has on it, but they have been known to sell for $65, and I am going to buy it and take a chance on it because I like Royal Ducks. It's a different thing than Beswick. It was made in Czechoslovakia, and people like it. This one has the Beswick mark. And I suspect the rest do as well. This has the paper label with the elephant. These little Majolica humidors with the pipes on them are a neat thing. They did a lot of different varieties. This one's got some sort of a stuffing in there to help take the moisture out. And it is a woman with a horse. So this is a tobacco or cigarette box, and this would date to about 1910. Unusual to see a female form on these. And it's $50. That's rather unusual. And I have to say that's tempting as well. I might be spending some money on this soldier this morning. The little one here is 40. Again, right around 1900 or 1910. Majolica starts to go out of style because electric light comes along and these very bright uh, colors under the gloss glaze that was reflected are not as necessary in homes anymore because you can see things more clearly. This one's on the basic side, but this is a 1910s tea caddy. You open up the box and you have your places for tea. These can be quite elaborate and have a lot of fitted pieces, glass pieces, to use for tea parties as well, and they can be quite expensive. This one's a rather straightforward one. Another interesting thing in the Fenton Crest lines is when the base color is different. This is Emerald Crest, so the milk glass is on the outside rather than the inside. Now, for you Dalton collectors, this is an interesting piece. This is Dalton Silicon Ware. I really like the relief on it, and it's an interesting repeating design there. You can see the mark. It's a little different than the regular, but it says Dalton Silicon Lambeth. It's unfortunate that it's got that one bead knocked off, but other than that, it is certainly worth the $60 they're asking for it. A lot of people like the pre-Royal Royal Dalton pieces because they're a different feel than the later ones. Studs? Wow. It sounds like something that it isn't. This is for collar studs back in the day. Nowadays, people keep other things in them. I actually know someone who <laughs> keeps condoms in something that says this. I think that's wishful thinking. Most of these were made in England, and it's just cute, and you know, for $8 with the horseshoe on it, I think I have to put that in my pile. Maria Innocencia Hummel was the nun who came up with the Hummel figurines shortly before the Second World War. Now, Hitler did not approve as a result, so they were not allowed to be made during the war, and she died in 1946, so she never got to see what an incredible success these became. But so much so that by the 1960s, Goebel was making a bust of her as an homage for the fact that she created this product that really made them an international success. 
I think she'd be very happy to see how many people really love Hummel figurines today and that her work survived. Here we have the music box, only $40 on that. Now these are really cute. They're Raggedy Ann and Andy Planters by Bob's Merrill for the nursery from about 1975. And what great prices, two for five dollars. Seems very reasonable. This dresser set is European, and my guess is Val St. Lambert, because they did a lot of this sort of elegant Depression-era glass in the 30s in order to stay in business when the artware market wasn't so good, and a lot of it has these shapes that seem familiar, but just a little different than what we're used to in the American market. $40 is a nice price. You have a nice little pin dish, the candlestick holders in your tray. Very pretty set. Neat pair of Murano fruit bookends for $165. These folks are having some fun. I have this in my barware collection. It was made by Shenango China, and they're asking $24 for it, which I'm sure is about the right price. We'll take some Hanes, a horseshoe or two, and some old date nails from the railroad. And you can put together a pretty cool-looking stand to hold your canes or umbrellas. That is a very neat concept. We have some very pretty... Hollywood Regency style 1960s boudoir items, the console set with candlesticks dripping in prisms, and this very nice bottle set. Even the mirror is good because it's got the birds in it. This is by Matson, and Matson did better quality. It's actually got the label on it right there. And this has the birds in it. Birds and roses seem to sell for premiums in this sorts of thing. Nice set of doorknobs, various sets from the 1890s to about 1910. And it's great when they've got the plates as well. That makes them more valuable. So that pair's 48. It's supposed to 25 to 35 for the ones without. Well, I decided to get the Syracuse Bowl, and then the nice lady running the space said, oh, I've got a Royal Air Force hanky, and I think that's rather interesting as well, so I'm going to get that too. Well, there's much more footage from this show that I want to bring to you, and so please come over with me now after this video ends to the Antique Nomad Live. That's my new live channel, and I'm going to do the rest of the footage showing it live to you and commenting while we watch it together because the rain is so heavy now that the sound quality is really starting to be poor on the recording that I'm doing. So I'm going to have more footage for you and we will have fun. That's the Antique Nomad Live right after this video ends. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. I'm so glad I got to bring the Utica Antiques Market to you. It is a really good show. And we had a great day yesterday. Hopefully the rain will settle down and we'll be able to do some stuff this afternoon for the customers who come in the real world. But in the meantime, I'm glad I got to bring it to you on the online world. And I am George the Antique Nomad at the social media you see below here. Please do come check us out here again and on the Antique Nomad Live and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!